Well, hello there to all of you wonderful, <clears throat> beautiful people of the world and of the universe. Welcome to Masha for the Awakening, where every day we do take a look at the major astrological transit along with the energy forecasting, and we do this for our personal and our soul evolution. Yep, our personal and our soul evolution. Mm. Mm. What a tricky road that has ended up becoming, soul evolution. Mm. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk today. First of all, I, I hope everybody has had a nice weekend with the <clears throat> new moon we had Friday night, Saturday morning in wonderful, loving, spiritually inclined, divine sign of Pisces, along with the two planets of love, Pisces, spiritual love, and Venus, human love. I'm going to wait a second for the loyal viewers of the chat room to join. Hello there. <laughs> Mm. We have a lot to talk about this morning. Um. <clears> hmm. <throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> So, we're going to be looking at the moon in Aries. The moon in Aries post the new moon in Pisces. Yep. Let me just make sure I got the whole technology thing here working. Mm -mm. Okay, so <clears throat> how was your weekend? Hmm? How was your weekend? Today is Monday, Monday, March 15th. Monday, March 15th. <clears throat> we had the new moon in Pisces. We had the spiritual favor. We also, I'm going to be talking about something today um, that is part of why I love astrology because it really gives us a greater understanding of the um it gives us a greater understanding of larger cycles let me see something here yeah it gives us a greater understanding of the cycles. And we're entering something very interesting, which is why I've been speaking so much on the spiritual favor. <clears throat> So much for the past month, the spiritual favor, the spiritual favor, the spiritual favor, understanding what every single week since November 30th, 
And we're in March. Okay, so for a couple of months, every single week, the spiritual favor was being formed and developed and, and room was being created in us to allow us to receive the spiritual favor. What's happening now that started yesterday, the day post the new moon in Pisces, is that the brand spanking new moon of the spiritual favor with Neptune and Venus in Pisces, so it's like a fresh baby, a fresh life, a fresh beginning, a fresh reborn. With Neptune, with Venus, all love, all love landed in Aries on Chiron. So a fresh baby, full of love, lands in Aries, as it should, because, you know, Aries is the sign that does come after Pisces, but right on Chiron, the wound. <clears throat> and this is going to be a theme now for the next four weeks or so. Because as the planets leave Pisces, they arrive in Aries. And if you guys remember, and, and this is everything for uh, April. This is also all described in the April month ahead videos, which I actually finished. Um, which will be uploaded at the end of March. Remember, remember the last six months of 2020. Remember the last six months of 2020. We had Mars, ruler of Aries, in Aries for six months instead of its normal transit, which would be five weeks. Because Mars, ruler of Aries, arrived at 28 degrees of Aries and then retrograded. And it squared Pluto and the Capricorn Brigade, which then included Saturn and Jupiter three times. Well, two times, and then the third was through Taurus and Aquarius. But all that, we're going to call it the Mars transiting through Aries for six months, squaring Pluto and the Capricorn Brigade three times. That, that chunk of time, those six months, those transits, that window of time that we all went through was an enormous death process. The death of the old way, the, the, yeah, the end of something. And if you remember back in September, October, November, I was speaking about the turkey that was dying. And how everybody likes to glorify the rising phoenix, but nobody wants to talk about the dying turkey. Remember that? <laughs> and that's why I like to speak in, you know, parables or um, archetypal language because it triggers the whole memory back. So that was the turkey dying. And... What's beginning to happen is not only is the phoenix getting rising um, through the spiritual favor of Pisces, okay, the spiritual, the, the reborn, being reborn in Pisces, the spiritual baptism, the spiritual birth before the human birth, before the phoenix takes flight. There's a spiritual birth happening. There's a spiritual baptism that we've just been through in Pisces. What's going to happen now that we started to see yesterday, but most of you guys are not signed up for the astrology class, so you didn't hear me speaking about this in detail uh, and looking at it in your personal charts. <laughs> <clears throat> but we had an amazing astrology class yet again last night, every Sunday night. Um, 
really beautiful. We talked a lot about this. You know, and in the astrology class, it's beautiful because we come together and we, we actually talk about this stuff in everyone's chart. And it's it's a beautiful healing that happens. It's incredible. Um, so I do, I thank those of you that are registered and signed up and, and you guys know what we talk about and what happens and the healing that happens and the sacredness that, that unfolds in this group. So... <clears throat> the spiritual favor, the spiritual bath, the phoenix being blessed. <clears throat> and in April, but what we started yesterday when the moon came out of her spiritual bath, came out of her baptism, came out of her spiritual favor and landed on Chiron and Aries. This is really significant. For the next four or so weeks, all the energies are going to move through Aries. It was initiated yesterday, post-new moon in Pisces, baby moon on Chiron and Aries. It started yesterday, but most people aren't seeing it. Most astrologers aren't talking about it this way. It's, you know, you, you got to watch. You have to see. <laughs> so for four weeks, we're going to have, you know, slowly the energies moving into Aries. and reigniting the last six months of 2020 when Mars, the ruler of Aries, was here, retrograding in a square to Pluto. What am I trying to get to? We're about to be confronted with our will, our brokenness, man's will. Versus God's will, Pluto. In, the, in, in about a month from now, the energies are going to be moving through the end of Aries. Squaring Pluto, Mercury and the sun, Venus, all squaring Pluto. The phoenix will have taken flight. It's a whole new beginning there of life. But the, the clash of the titans that were about to enter has to do with uh hold on oh why is that not showing uh the clash of the titans is going to have to do with man's will versus God's will. <clears throat> man's will versus God's will. This is what we're entering, okay? Now, come on over to my website, maja-astrology.com, okay? And come on over to the newsletter. And check this out right here. Maja for the Awakening. And go ahead and click on it. And you, if you haven't yet subscribed to my newsletters, you might want to do so. So <clears throat> we're doing the Spring Equinox um, event. That's in less than a week. That's Saturday, March 20th. So come on over here and check it out. Maja for the Awakening. Surrendering man's will to God's will. Healing the wounded Chiron and Aries in us. This is a look into the astrology of spring and Jesus' promise for our salvation through the love of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be following Chiron through the houses, through the 12 houses. Chiron and Aries. Chiron and Aries through the 12 houses, when Saturday, March 20th, from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you can check it out here. And uh, it's free, by the way. Uh, you do need to register through the Eventbrite. You can actually click on here. 
And that should take us to there, except maybe not because I'm on this thing. Saturday, March 20th, it's a free workshop. However, donations may be submitted there. Okay. Okay, let's see something. Yeah, it doesn't let me do this because I'm on this thing. <clears throat> Let me show you here. So man's will versus God's will. Okay. Man's will versus God's will. How do you like that? How do you like them apples? Man's will versus God's will. Who gets started? Who, who wins? Right? Who wins? I got to sign into this stuff. Hold on a second. Oh, this computer drives me crazy. You know, the technology, it's like they change it all the time. They just go on and change things. <sighs> wow. That's weird. Okay, that's even weirder. <sighs> What's going on here? All right, let's log out of there. Let's try this other one. Have you guys noticed that? That they just, uh, you know, it's like with the technology, you get it right. And then they just change it. <sighs> okay, here we go. So I'm about to show you guys something here. Give me a second. Oh, wow, great. We've got 11 people signed up already. Beautiful. Very exciting to see that. So I sent out the newsletter, you know, yesterday. Here, let me see if I can change this here. <laughs> Give me a second. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, there we go. This is going to be nicer to look at. I can squeeze it in here. Thanks for your patience, y'all. <laughs> Alrighty, so, because <clears throat> I want to read this to you properly. All right, here it is. This is this is it. This is the Eventbrite link. Uh, it's free. Uh, I am going to be doing it by donation, so please do consider, um, as the Lord puts it on your heart, uh, to donate. <clears throat> so I'm not, you know, making it a fee. Um, and uh, you can uh, read the instructions here. We go live at 4 p.m. on March 20th um, so that people in different time zones can participate without too much of a concern. Uh, yes, the event will be video recorded. Um, it is free. Donations are accepted. There's the link for the donations through the ministry. And here's something I want to read for you guys. This is uh, the message for each of the 12 signs about the spring equinox, about the Chiron in Aries, about the lesson of the last six months in 2020 when, uh, when Mars was in a square, okay, when Mars was in a square to Pluto. <clears throat> so we've been speaking about the spiritual baptism, the spiritual favor, and we're entering a time of the clash of the Titans where it's going to be man's will versus God's will. So you want to have that spiritual favor really close to your heart because you're going to need it is the point I'm making. Okay. Surrendering man's will for God's will. What do you think Chiron and Aries is? Why do you think we just had a new moon in Pisces with Venus and Neptune? Why do you think the morning after 
the moon in Pisces, the moon landed in, on Chiron in Aries. Why do you think Mars retrograded and stayed in its home sign of Aries for a total of six months, squaring Pluto three times? What do you think is coming now that was initiated yesterday when the moon arrived and landed on Chiron? Okay, so <clears throat> this is the spring equinox energy. And so I wrote a little here for each of the 12 signs that you can get an understanding of what's what this is about for you. Okay, so Aries and Aries Risings, put down your sword. God wins every battle. You are being reborn. Let him help you. The peace you seek is in his resting place. Chiron is in Aries. And let's learn this sooner than later because Chiron is at eight degrees of Aries. It's got 21 degrees to go. <laughs> okay. Taurus and Taurus Risings. There are things you cannot see, touch, or know happening behind the veil. Have deeper faith. The beauty of truth prevails in the spirit. Gemini, maybe the path you sought after was not yours to have. Rediscover the dream in him. For you, the path paved in peace is yours to know. Cancer, Cancer Risings, life mission is calling you forth. Revival in determination with new eyes sets you forth. Come out to create unique and brave. Saving grace is here. You've been called. Leo and Leo Risings, <clears throat> the mind knows not the path of the heart. Bow to the love that calls to your innocence once more. Trust in God's glory. Whew. Virgo, Virgo rising. Gentle passions are hidden from sight. Rebirth renews your revival and you take flight. No need to long for the past. Libra, Libra risings. What they show you is sincere. Your heart breaks open to see. Someone is carrying the burden of unglamorous shadows. Bring love to them. Scorpio. <clears throat> Take heed your health. The fire which consumes you can be your rebirth or your death. Listen to the grass growing and follow its path. Sagittarius, Sagittarius Risings. True love is in Christ. The fellowship you seek is cherished in the heart of his love. The eyes of the beloved are upon you now. Capricorn and Capricorn Rising. The ground has been burned. Riches in the soil will come, but first tend to family, and the foundations of your rock are calling you. Aquarius, your mind is a fire out in the universe, your tongue clear and purified. New words are coming for you to share, your insights fresh and reborn. Pisces, Pisces Risings, the eagle takes flight, sees the offerings of the ground, of, of the pastures below. Things are changing and you find your new perch. Gazing, you see eternally. So this little uh, riddle, these little poems for each of the 12 signs is a little something that you can meditate on regarding your sun sign and or your rising sign around what I'm discussing here. Um, the spring equinox message for the star signs. 
and what this means now, what we're in now. So make sure you guys come on over here. Uh, you can come to my website, maja-astrology.com. Go to the newsletter. If you are not yet subscribed to my newsletter, you might want to consider doing that today so that you don't miss out on opportunities like this and many more things that are coming. Um, and so we're going to be... Um, we're going to be in prayer. We're going to pray. We're going to, we're going to have a, um, astrological discussion of Chiron and Aries in each of the 12 houses. Um, so you want to know where, you know, Aries is in your chart. You want to have a little understanding of your own chart so that as you follow along, you can see what it means for you. Um, and as well, uh, we're going to pray over this transit in, in Jesus's name, through the love of the Holy Spirit, we're going to pray over the astrology. So many of you know that, you know, I'm a Christian now and, uh, wow. Right. Like, am I supposed to even be doing astrology? Uh, <laughs> right. Well, I talked to Jesus about it. And uh, for now, he's uh, instructing me this way. So I follow what he says. Obviously, when he showed up for me in my life, um, he asked me if I was going to talk about him here, you know, on the YouTube. Because I talked about everything else in my life regarding, you know, spiritual practice and development the last 30 years. And I told him, uh, yes, absolutely. I'm going to talk about you and I'm going to talk about you every day, actually. And so he's, you know, he's instructing me. And for now, this is what I'm doing. So this is astrology. We're going to look at Chiron, the wound, where we are personally wounded. Chiron and Aries, the, the wounded warrior, the wounded self will and God's will. And we're going to pray in Jesus' name through the love of the Holy Spirit on top of this transit for you in your life. Because God, as it says in Aries, put down your sword. God wins every battle. The peace you seek is in his resting place. And so we're about to enter. And you guys, if you've been following my work, you know, for a while, you guys know, like, that's why it's so important right now to know for yourself the spiritual favor that's been given to you. We've been talking about this every week since November. 30th. Hopefully you're following along. Hopefully you're registered for the astrology classes. If you guys want to sign up for April, the links are up. You can register through the website for the astrology classes in April. So we're going from spiritual favor and we're still in the spiritual favor because the sun is at 25 degrees of Pisces. You know, we got five more days of the sun in Pisces. Venus is at 22 degrees of Pisces. Like there's still this beautiful spiritual favor. Yet also yesterday on Sunday, that fresh baby moon, that moon coming out of the spiritual baptism landed on Chiron to give us the insight of what's coming. <clears throat> and, you know, Astrology has to do with Greek mythology. Astrology has to do with uh, Babylon, the Babylonian. Astrology has to do with the Anunnakis. <laughs> and that's why now when I do astrology, for now, this way, I, 
I do it in, in prayer. Pray over the transits. Because there's a curse on astrology. Hope you guys know that. There's a, just like there's a curse on money. Just like there's a curse in medicine. Just like there's a curse in any indoctrination. There's also a curse on astrology. Because it comes from Babylon. It comes from the Anunnaki. And so I'm instructed to pray over the transits in Jesus' name. So we're going to, and that's also why the 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 workshop on the 20th, where we're gonna pray over you, we're gonna pray over you, we're gonna pray over the transit in your chart, in your life, upon you, in Jesus' name. Chiron and Aries. Clash of the Titans. <laughs> God, you know, God wins. And we want to bless the path. We want to redeem. Well, Chiron and Aries is like where we're broken. How many times do we have to hit our heads against a brick wall? How many times do we have to stumble and fall? When do we recognize our wound in Aries is actually our saving grace? It's where we can re-enter the kingdom of the whole through the love of the Holy Spirit. We can re-enter the kingdom through the love of the Holy Spirit. What does God want for you? That's the question. But Moon and Aries, you know, it's like, well, I want chocolate. I want chocolate right now. You know, what is? does God want you to have chocolate? And it's okay if you guys, you know, don't agree. It's, it's fine. It's like, <laughs> I know most of you do. Tr trust me. Trust me, as we get towards this time in April and those transits in Aries are squaring Pluto, you're going to remember today's video. Oh, that's what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why don't you go ahead and receive the blessing of God's favor now so that you don't have to hit your head against a brick wall in four weeks. <laughs> So that we can understand what, what is God's will for us. So anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about on uh, March 20th on Saturday. Um, so see what happened yesterday. When Mars, when uh, the moon, the fresh baby moon, the freshly baptized moon arrived on Chiron and Aries. Notice what that was for you. What showed up for you? And and put that on the back burner, write it down, circle it. Uh it's gonna go, it's gonna go away a little bit. And then in four weeks from now, it's gonna be even stronger. So that's what today's video is about. <laughs> Moon in Aries and self-will. So when the baby is born, uh, you know, it's it's that uh how how many of us live for God's will and how many of us live for our will? And what's the difference? And 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 what what is your relationship to God regarding will? Well, look at the world. What has happened to the world? <laughs> Because there's free will. Yes, there is free will. God gives us free will. So that we choose him. <laughs> exactly. 
God gives you free will so you can get up every morning and exercise. God gives you free will so that you can choose to eat healthy. God gives you free will so you can choose to speak properly. God gives you free will to, to love one another. God gives us free will to choose him, Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. <clears throat> and as a as a uh, newborn Christian over here, um, I finally understand, and we talked about this a lot last night too in the astrology class, the uh, the meaning of Jesus, not Christ consciousness, which is, in my opinion, false light, false ascension. And I know I was in it for 30 years. But anyway, so... Uh, <sighs> <laughs> wow. And every month I'm going to do one of these workshops that focuses on a specific transit and how, you know, through, through the houses and praying in Jesus's name over the transits, over the astrology in your chart, in your life. Until, until Jesus tells me no more. And then I just do ministry work for forever. But for now, this is uh, what he's having me do. So, yep. Yeah. Later on today, late today, early tomorrow morning, pay attention to that as well. Because the moon will, woo, that was weird. The moon will, and you know, psychic attacks happen. Like, yeah, I'm talking about this stuff and like psychic attacks happen, but I'm protected in the blood of Christ. I stand behind Jesus. Jesus stands before me. <laughs> but yeah, the psychic attacks come, especially because I'm talking about this this way. And that's what Jesus is having me do. And I'm like, okay, okay. You know, it's part of my redemption work, actually. Uh... <sighs> <clears throat> rebuking spirits of illness and disease from our minds, from our flesh, and from our spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We do that in Christ, in Creator Christ every morning, today at 11. Hope you guys can make it. And today at 5, I mean, I love Mondays. Mondays, it's like, hello, how was your weekend? Let's talk about what's happening. I'm all, you know, juiced up from an amazing astrology class we had last night. And then we come on here on Monday morning, we talk about it, and there's like all this exciting energy, and then we do Create a Christ at 11 a.m., and at 5.30, we have a, the prayer group in for you in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit. I love Mondays. So much happens on Mondays. I hope you can join everything that we're doing. Uh, because tonight and tomorrow morning, more so tomorrow morning, depends on where you live in the world, but between tonight and tomorrow morning, the moon in Aries will square Pluto. <sighs> the moon in Aries will square Pluto. Hmm. I'm telling you guys, pay attention to what happened March 14th and 15th regarding your will versus God's will, moon and Aries, and your self-will. This is basically what the last six months of 2020 were all about. Remember how grueling that was. Wow. Wow. <sighs> that was, I mean, ev all, we had like six planets retrograding. Mars was one of them in its home sign of Aries and a square to the Capricorn Brigade. And that was grueling. Heavy, dark, never ending. <laughs> but also, you know, amazing, amazing gifts appeared because we were held back so strongly, because we were not permitted to move correctly as we wished. 
you know, and you're going to see why. And I'm not saying everybody's going to see why, but it depends on, you know, like how, how you process life, how you pray, how do you see life? How, you know, what, what, what do you value? What comes first for you? Sex? Money? God? Redemption? Prayer? Gluttony? You cheating on someone? You having an affair with someone? You're stealing money from your brother, your sister? You're cursing somebody in your mind? What comes first for you? You're lying. You're deceitful. You deceive yourself. You deceive others. What comes first for you? You attack people. You hate people. You're jealous. You're envious. What comes first for you? You're finding forgiveness. Redemption. Chiron and Aries is where we can go into redemption. And I'm not speaking to you as a religious person. I'm speaking to you as a spiritual person who has had a relation, who has had a relationship with Jesus, a very personal relationship with Jesus that's changing my life. So I don't know what, you know, the wound of religion has done to you. I don't know. I wasn't raised religious. So luckily, you know, it's like, it's a weird you know, so I, I only met Jesus when I was 46 years old. So I lived, you know, my whole life without knowing him. That kind of sucks. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't have the religious innuendos and, and brainwashing and guilt and, and abuse that a lot of religion does. Not all of it, but a lot of it. So, you know, it's like nothing's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nothing's perfect. Uh, but when I speak about redemption, I'm not trying to trigger you into whatever religious guilt your upbringing may have caused you or your experience in a certain institution may have caused you. I'm talking about bringing whatever is heavy on your heart, whatever your curse is, whatever your sin, whatever your curse is, which is not personal. The curse I'm talking about is not personal. It's the curse on humanity. It comes from your bloodline. Your family members have it. Your deceased, the sins of your fathers have it. That curse, it's like bringing whatever that is, however that shows up for you in your life, bringing that to the feet of Christ. Jesus Christ. Not Christ consciousness, not some star family. Yeah, I, I was in that for 30 years. I know all about it. That's not it. That's not it. Bring it to the feet of Jesus because he's the one that gave his blood as a sacrifice for our salvation against the reptilian curse, the wheel of samsara, the false light, the false ascension. His blood stands between you and the reptilian curse, the satanic reptilian curse that has you coming back, reincarnating, 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 re hell, reincarnating here constantly is hell. The blood of Christ stands in the courtroom before Satan, which is the reptilian curse, so that you don't have to reincarnate. Because Jesus' blood is before you. And yes, you have sinned. And yes, you were born into sin. And yes, there's a satanic, reptilian curse on humanity, which throws you back on the recycling soul wheel of samsara so that you can keep being a battery for these motherfuckers. And Jesus said, enough of that, you motherfuckers. Use my blood. I've paid for their sins. They are no longer trapped in the reptilian curse. They're coming home with me in eternal salvation. That's the blood of Christ for you new agers out there. Listen, open your ears. Why do you think the monks, 
in the Himalayas. Chant. Uh, what is that chant called again? I have it tattooed on my arm. Om Namo Guru Dev. No, not that one. It's uh, to release them from the seven levels of the mind. Come on, somebody must know what it is in the chat room. It's this one. That's a chant that the monks chant their whole lives so that when they die, they're not trapped back in the wheel of samsara. They're not trapped back in one of the seven levels of the mind. They're chanting that chant so that they can be freed from the reptilian curse. That's what Jesus did. Om Mani Padme Hum. Thank you. Om Mani Padme Hum. That is to release them from the, the bondage of the seven minds, the seven levels, the seven minds, the seven seals, whatever it is. Why do you think they chant that? Because they know, they know they're stuck in this recycling of the souls. You sin, you come back. You sin, you come back. What's the sin? It's the reptilian curse in your reptilian brain. It's like we're talk about a setup for failure. The reptilian curse has you set up for failure so that your soul can recycle because you've sinned because you've been in the reptilian curse. And God says, okay. And, and at some point it was like, how many times are they going to do this? How many times are they going to do this? So Jesus comes, not Christ consciousness, Jesus Christ and his blood, because they wanted blood ritual. Look at all the traditions all over the world. It's all about blood sacrifice, blood rituals, sacrificing humans, sacrificing babies, sacrificing animals. You see it at every pyramid. You see it every at Stonehenge. You see it everywhere in ancient cultures. Blood sacrifices. That's satanic. That's reptilian. Jesus shows up. And says, yo, we're going to put an end to this because I, I, you know, nobody else could do it but him. Nobody else could do it but him. So when you stand behind Christ and you do the redemption, this is the redemption work. You say, holy camoli, I'm sorry, I was blind, I did not see. I'm sorry, I was deaf, I did not hear. And you realize that uh, there's a spiritual warfare. And the spiritual warfare for you New Agers out there, which I was one of you for 30 years, so I'm saying this with a tremendous amount of love and compassion, because I know, I know the deception. This is it. Chiron and Aries, how many times are we going to have to die and be reincarnated in the false light through the reptilian curse, so that you're used as a battery, you know, so that your endocrine system is used as a battery juice for them through your suffering. Because you're not at peace. You pretend you're at peace. I know. You pretend you're at peace. You pretend like everything you're doing is bringing you to peace. And it's not. It's not. You keep seeking because you haven't been found. You keep looking because you're blind. I know. It's horrific. And it's so subtle. And it's so deceptive. This is Chiron and Aries. God's will versus the will of man. And the, the, the new age, the reptilian, the false ascension is all about you, 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 you. You can do it. You can heal your life. It's up to you. You created this. It's your fault. Just love yourself a little bit more. 
just do positive mantras and positive thinking and positive affirmations. And it's all about you and what you need to do and what you need to fix and what you need to resolve and what you need to, to heal. Uh-uh. It's not about you. That's the deception. It's not about you. You can't fix this. <laughs> But that's going to put all the new age people out of business. Literally out of business. <laughs> you can't handle the truth, right? It's not, I can't fix this. You can't fix this. <laughs> there's no amount of, uh, there's no amount of therapy or ayahuasca or astrology or anything that's going to fix this for you. Jesus is going to fix this for you. He already did. That's the redemption work. That's Chiron and Aries. Redeem it. Give it to his feet. Put it at his feet. You can't fix it. You cannot fix this. You can't fix the reptilian curse. You can't fix Satan's curse. You were never designed to fix Satan's curse. You can't. The love of Jesus does, though, and has. But God's also given you a free will so that you can choose Christ. <laughs> wow. And I know the deception of the New Age movement. There's a lot of arrogance and pride, right? Like, oh, I don't need Christ. Like, I can do this myself. You're deceived. I don't need Jesus. I can do this myself. I'm just going to call up on my star family and this and that. And, and I know I'm going to lose a lot of viewers. I'm going to lose a lot of viewers today. That's okay. Because I'm speaking the truth. This is the deception of the new age. This is the deception of false ascension. This is the deception of blood sacrifices. This is the deception of Christ consciousness in the new age movement. And I'm going to lose a lot of viewers and that's okay. That's okay. I'm also going to gain a lot of viewers. That's okay too. And I'm going to be talking about this more and more because Chiron is in Aries. Man's will versus God's will. And Nobody, you know, and I get it too, because like nobody could change my mind until Jesus showed up literally in my living room. Chiron and Aries, the wound. That's all it is. <clears throat> so I'm going to read this again for you. Let me find it here. Uh, in case you want to sign up for the, uh, and it's free. You see, it's free. You can donate to the ministry as it is put upon your heart to do so, but it's not required to participate on March 20th. This Saturday, you guys, make sure you sign up. I'm going to read it for you guys again here. And you can, uh, I'll add the link in here, actually. Let me see. Put my glasses on because I can't see a darn thing. Okay. I'm going to put it in. The chat room as well. There we go. There's the Eventbrite link that you guys can register with. 
I'm going to pin the message there. Yeah. Okay. And it's free. And we're going to be praying over Chiron and Aries. And we're going to be praying over the wound in Jesus' name. Through the, whoa, through the love of the Holy Spirit. Whoa, super dizzy right there. Whew. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm getting like, whoa, very dizzy. Good. Aries, Aries risings, put down your sword. God wins every battle. You are being reborn. Let him help you. The peace you seek is in his resting place. Oof. Taurus and Taurus risings. There are things you cannot see, touch, or know happening behind the veil. Have deeper faith. The beauty of truth prevails in the spirit, in the Holy Spirit. Gemini. Maybe the path you sought after was not yours to have. Rediscover the dream in him. For you, the path paved in peace is yours to know. Cancer, Cancer Risings. <clears throat> Life mission is calling you forth. Revival and determination with new eyes sets you forth. Come out to create unique and brave. Saving grace is here. You have been called. Leo, Leo Risings. The mind knows not the path of the heart. Bow to the love that calls to your innocence once more. Trust in God's glory. Virgo, Virgo risings. Gentle passions are hidden from sight. Rebirth renews your revival and you take flight. No need to long for the past. Libra, Libra Risings, what they show you is sincere. Your heart breaks open to see. Someone is carrying the burden of unglamorous shadows. Bring love to them. Scorpio, take heed your health. The fire which consumes you can be your rebirth or your death. Listen to the grass growing and follow its path. Sagittarius. True love is in Christ. The fellowship you seek is cherished in the heart of his love. The eyes of the beloved are upon you now. Capricorn. The ground has been burned. Riches in the soil will come, but first tend to the family and foundations of your rock are calling you. Aquarius, your mind is a fire out in the universe, your tongue clear and purified. New words are coming for you to share, your insights fresh and reborn. Pisces, the eagle takes flight, sees the offerings of the pastures below. Things are changing, and you find your new perch. Gazing, you see eternally. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm also going to add it here in the descriptions. For the spring equinox, this Saturday, it's free. We're going to pray over this transit in Jesus' name. We're going to pray in Jesus' name through the love of the Holy Spirit over this transit, over the Chiron and Aries. And this is going to be the energy that carries us for the spring season. Man's will versus God's will. I don't know. What side of the story do you want to be on? You know what I'm saying? What side of the story do you want to be on? So we started a little late today and um, I got to get going. Hope to see you in the Kriya to Christ yoga at 11. I, I'm going to read a little bit here as I do every morning now uh, from here from a book. 
I got this really cool book and uh, we're just going to read what I, what did I do with my, huh? Oh, here it is. Okay. So <laughs> happy Monday, everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's broadcast where we're talking about, you know, the moon in Aries, your personal will, God's will. Where do they meet? Where do you surrender your will and accept God's will for you in your life? How does this change you in your life? And this is no small feat. This is no small task. This isn't just about, you know, not eating chocolate. <laughs> this is not just about eating chocolate. Oh, what am I doing here? Hold on. There we go. <laughs> this is not just about eating chocolate. There we go. All right. <clears throat> it's going to be a short reading today just because uh, we got to get ready for yoga. But here we go. In you, O oh Lord, I have placed my trust. Wow. And take refuge. Amen. Hallelujah. In you, O oh Lord, I have placed my trust and take refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, rescue me. Incline your ear to me. Deliver me quickly. Be my rock of refuge and a strong fortress to save me. Yes, you are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. You will draw me out of the net. Uh, that have secretly laid for me, that the enemy has secretly laid for me. For you are my strength and my stronghold. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, the God of truth and faithfulness. Thank you, Mary, for your super chat. That's really cute. I hate those who pay regard to vain, empty, worthless idols. But I trust in the Lord and rely on him with unwavering confidence. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have taken note of my life's distresses and you have not given me into the hands of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious and compassionate to me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is clouded and weakened by grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength has failed because of my iniquity, and even my body has wasted away. Because of all my enemies, I have become a reproach and disgrace, especially to my neighbors and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me on the street run from me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel, for I have heard the slander and whispering of many terror is on every side while they scheme together against me they plotted to take away my life but as for me i trust confidently in you and your greatness o lord i said you are my god my times are in your hands rescue me from the hand of my enemies from satan right from satan from lucifer from the reptilian curse and from those who pursue and persecute me, right? Spiritual attacks, demonic attacks, astral attacks. Make your face shine upon your servant. 
Save me in your loving kindness. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked, the godless, be put to shame. Let them be silent in Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak insolently and arrogantly against the consistently righteous with pride and contempt. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who reverently fear you, which you have prepared for those who take refuge in you before the sons of man. In the secret place of your presence, you hide them from the plots and conspiracies of man. You keep them secretly in a shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown his marvelous favor and loving kindness to me in a besieged city. As for me, I said in my alarm, I am cut off from your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications, my specific requests to you when I cried to you for help. Oh, love the Lord, all you his godly ones. The Lord preserves the faithful, those who morally and, and spiritual integrity and fully repays the self-righteousness of the arrogant. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, favored by God is he who transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute wickedness and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all the day long for day and night your hand of displeasure was heavy upon me my energy my vitality and strength was drained away as with the burning heat of summer i acknowledged my sin to you and i did not hide my wickedness i said i will confess all my transgressions to the lord redemption and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you for forgiveness in a time when you are near and may be found. Surely when the great waters of trial and distressing times overflow, they will not reach the spirit in him. You are my hiding place. You, Lord, protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will, counsel, I will counsel you who are willing to learn with my eye upon you. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, whose trappings include brittle and rain to hold them in check. Otherwise. They will not come near to you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. But he who trusts in and relies on the Lord shall be surrounded with compassion and loving kindness. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, who actively seek right standing with him. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a short one today, my friends. It's a short one. We got to get ready for yoga. Create a Christ yoga. That's right. Create a Christ yoga. Happy Monday, everybody. God bless. Please join us. Sign up right now for the workshop happening this Saturday for the spring equinox. Man's will versus God's will, Chiron and Aries, 
We're going to be praying in Jesus' name through the love of the Holy Spirit over that transit in the astrology through the 12 houses. Um, God bless you. Have a beautiful Monday. Um, if you'd like to sign up for the April online astrology classes, the links are up. And if you're not yet on the newsletter, subscribe through maja-astrology.com so that you don't miss out on many future events that are happening. Also tonight at 530, we're doing the prayer group for you in Jesus's name. If you're looking for spiritual prayer in Jesus, if you're looking for the love of the Holy Spirit, if you're looking for additional support, healing, we're going to be praying in Jesus's name. The Holy Spirit shows up. It's really beautiful. So have a great day, everybody. Bye.